Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series, we're creating a calendar inside of our Django and React application by using full calendar. This is not the first video in this series. In fact, we've already done seven before in which we did an introduction and a basic setup, explored different views and displayed database data, given events different colors and added some filters and also added links to our events. In this video, we're going to continue and we're going to make sure that we can click on a cell in our calendar and based on that, create an event in a model. And this topic is actually going to be split up across two videos. In this first video, we will make sure that we can click on a calendar cell and that a model will pop up with some information on the event. And then in the next video, we're going to continue and add forms to that model so that we can submit some data. Now to complete that first part, we're going to be following four steps. We're going to start with an install for full calendar interaction and add that to our plugins because that's what we will need to make sure that we can click on the cells of the calendar. Then we're going to get a model from Material UI and add that to our code. Next, we will make sure that the model is actually going to pop up when we click a date and also that it closes when we want to. And as a last step, we're going to see if we can add some data from the calendar in our model. So let's start by exploring the full calendar documentation. If we go to the docs and scroll down until we hit date and time, you can see that there are different options for date clicking and selecting. Now, the thing that we're going to be applying in our calendar is something called date click. And this triggers something when the user clicks on a date or on a time. So if we follow that particular one, you can see that the calendar has a parameter called date click we can add a function that will display something on the screen once that has actually happened. Now we also see that in order for this callback to fire, we must load the interaction plugin. So that's the first thing that we will do. So the first thing that we will do is actually install at full calendar slash interaction. So let's copy over at full calendar slash interaction. And inside of our code in the front end, we're going to stop the server. And in there we can do npm install and then add full calendar slash interaction. And with that complete, we can now go to our actual calendar. And in there, we first need to import that new plugin. So you can see right here that we need to take import interaction plugin from add full calendar slash interaction. So we're going to take that to our code and also make sure that we have that import ready. And then you can see that they add the interaction plugin to the plugins list. So we are also going to copy over interaction plugin and add that to the list that we already have right here. And let's save that. Now in the example, you can see that when the user clicks a date, it is going to launch a function that takes the parameter of info and shows some alerts on the screen. So let's try to replicate this first basic example inside of our own code. So the first thing that we can do is actually create a constant. And in that constant, we can say day click action. And in there, we can then say is equal to, and let's do info similarly as the example. And then we do an arrow function and some square brackets. And then we can define what we actually want to do once day click action has been clicked. Now to make it a little bit easier, I can just copy over and say that we want to see an alert with clicked on and then the info dot date string. So I'm going to put that in right here that when day click action is launched, we want to see an alert with the date string of the date that we're clicking. Now, the other thing that we can then do is add the parameter of date click to our calendar. And in there, we can specify that once we click a date, we want to use this function called day click action. And that is then going to put an alert on the screen with some information of the date that we've actually clicked. So let's save this and start our server again by doing npm run dev. And let's also make sure that our backend server is running. And let's see if this now works correctly. So we are now in our front end. And now when I click a date, you can indeed see that the local host says that we clicked the date called 2024.05.30. And if we now do that for another day, it also displays it that we did it for the 4th of June. So this is working in the way that we expect. Now, what we actually want to realize is make sure that when we click it, we have a model popping up inside of the screen, also showing some information about the date. Now, to do that, we first actually need to get a model. 
And luckily we don't need to develop that ourselves, but we can use some components from Material UI to already get a model that has been created. So on the documentation, we click on discover the core libraries, and then we're gonna go to Material UI, and then on the get started. And then when we scroll down all the way until we hit something called Utils, we can see that it has something called model. And in there, it has some examples of how you can get a pop-up on your screen that looks like a model. So if we click this button, you can see that the rest is being blanked out and we see text in a model. Now we can even do that nested. So we have parents and childs like this, or even have it with some transitions and this one specifically for performance. Now in our case, we're gonna keep it simple and we're gonna just do the basic model. So what I'm going to do is expand the code and make sure that it is set on JavaScript. And then we're going to copy over the source code from here. Now inside of our Django and React calendar, we have a components folder already with some calendars and some forms. And in this case, I'm just going to add another folder called utils. And the reason for that is just because it was also under utils in Material UI. And in there, we can create another file called model.jsx. And let's paste in the code right there. And I'm also going to change the basic model to name it my model, like this. Now, what this model actually does is uh, quite simple. It has a button and on click, it is going to set open to true which then is going to show the model. Uh, and then when you click somewhere else, it's going to activate handle close and handle close is going to set open to false, meaning that it should not be shown. Now, what we need to do is we need to implement this logic in our calendar eight file so that we can open the model with the date click defined inside of our calendar. So the first thing what I'm now going to do is actually import the model in our calendar eight, because that is where it needs to pop up. So inside of this file, we do import my model from utils.model, and we're gonna put it right after our return statement. Uh, let's say after the loading in here as well, and we can just define the block called my model. Now there are a few things that we now need to change. You can see in the model.jsx file that we have a button that currently opens the model based on our click. Uh, however, this should not happen here, but it should happen in our calendar eight page. So we're going to remove this button with the handle open, and we're going to also put the constant of open and set open, and also the handle open inside of our other file. So I'm cutting those out of our model.jsx file, and we're gonna to go to our calendar eight file and in here on the top, let's put the constants for open and set open and also the handle open. Now, of course, we still need to let our model know whether it is open or not, and also what triggers the handle open. So let's start by replacing the open constant with some props. So inside of our model.jsx file, if we control F and we look for open, you can see that it is being used right here. So inside of the function of my model, we can add some squarely brackets and define that open is going to be equal to a parameter called open. And inside of our calendar eight, we then need to define that the parameter of my model called open is going to be equal to the constant called open on our page right here. So now we can make sure that the open variable is available in our calendar eight, and we can actually manipulate it with this function right here. So every time we click on handle open, it is going to set open to true. Now, one other thing that we need to change is the way that use state is being done, because actually we don't need this react dot. We can just do use state and set it equal to false. Now, by having the constant of open in our calendar eight page, we can also make sure that handle open is going to manipulate that by doing set open is true. But we still need to make sure that handle open is being triggered whenever we actually click our calendar. So we need to replace the day click action with the handle 
open. So what we're going to do in the My Calendar 8 file, where we actually have the full calendar code, is we're going to add another prop next to My Events, and we're going to giving this the name of Day Click Action. And then we're going to delete the day click action that we have right now, because this is no longer going to be needed. Now you can see that our date click still is going to do day click action, but now we pass in the function through this parameter right here. So let's save this and go to our calendar. Now inside of our calendar.jsx file, we need to add another parameter to our calendar where we say that day click action is going to be equal to handle open. Now what this will do is the following. Inside of my calendar a.jsx, we define that whenever a day or time is being clicked in our calendar, we want to execute the day click action. So in our calendar eight, we say that day click action is going to be equal to the handle open function. And that means that whenever we click the calendar, it is going to trigger the handle open function, which is going to change the open variable from the default of false and set that to true. And this means that our model is then going to be opened. And the value of the concept of open is actually then passed to our model by using this variable right here. And that is going to tell this model whether it should be open or whether it should be closed. And that means that whenever we click something, it should open. And then when we click something else, it should close again by doing the handle close function that we've defined in here. So let's now see if our model opens when we click it. And we are now in our front end. And whenever we click the model, you can see that the model now opens. So that's working just fine. However, if I now click around, it doesn't close anymore. So let's go back and fix that. Now, the reason that it currently doesn't work is that the on close should use handle close, which is going to set the open to false. So it's going to do exactly the other way around than what we did, but the variable of open is no longer here. So what we need to do is we need to move the handle close to the calendar eight as well. So after the handle open, we're going to put in handle close. And then we need to tell our model that open is of course one of the parameters, but the other one is going to be handle close. And let's save that. And now inside of our model itself, we can state that handle close should actually do the function of handle close, but then in this file. And now it should be able to correctly manipulate the open constant and actually close the model when we click somewhere else. So let's save this and go back. And now when I click a date, it indeed displays the model. And if I click again, it closes again. So that's working just fine. Now, when I click this model, I actually also want to see what day we're actually selecting. And if we go to the date click documentation, you can scroll a little bit down and see that over here, they use the info to display different kinds of parameters. And if we go down even further, you can see that out of the box, the date click is going to display a few different data points. So the first thing is a date. It also has a date string, and it also tells some other things about what is going on on our calendar. For example, the view that we are using, but also some other things like all day is true or false, and also some other things. So what I want to do is click this and say, today is this date. Now in the example that we see right here, you can see that we just can use the info variable and then simply refer to info.dateString to get some data or for that fact, any of the other ones. So what we can do in our handle open logic is actually add some other things. So let's say, for example, I add some squarely brackets around the set open so that we can do some more stuff after that. And in here, I can say that I don't only want to set it to open, but we're also going to use the parameter called info and console.log info.dateString. And let's save this and see if the date then appears in our console once we've clicked one of those boxes. So we are now back. And if I click one of the boxes and then do inspect and go to our console, you can see that we get the date back in this console. So we now need to use that and put it in our model. Now to do that, we can create a new variable and that is equal to selected date. And then we can change this to set selected date. 
And now we can say that the default is just an empty list. And whenever we handle the open, we also want to change the value of selected date. So we can say in here that set selected date is going to be equal to the info.date string. And then we can delete the console.log. So now the value of the date is in the selected date, but we still need to bring that back to our model. So what we can do is add a prop there and pass it to the model. So we can say inside of our model that we would like to receive a prop and that prop is going to be called my date. And then we can use it in the title by saying, I have selected and then in there specify my date. And then I can say right here in the next video, I will add forms here because that's exactly what we're going to do. So now that we have set my date in this text, we can go to our calendar again and actually make sure that the my date is equal to the selected date. So we're going to go to our model and say that my date is equal to selected date. And that should now take the date of the constant and put it in our model. So we're now back in our front end again. And when we now click a date, you can see I have selected and then the actual date that we want to see right there. And that is actually all that we're going to be doing today. In this video, I showed you how you can create a pop-up model that is triggered based on clicking a cell in our calendar. In the next video, we're going to continue. And we're going to make sure that in that model, we can fill in a few forms so that we can actually create a new appointment from there. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.